Hey friends, welcome back to DigiTalk. In the previous session, we have learned how to create a managed server from the remote console. Okay, and then how to start the managed server and then how to uh, monitor the task. So whenever we uh, create any resource, okay, in uh, the WebLogic using the remote console, after that, for example, if we are going to start the any of the services, then it creates the corresponding task for that. And with the help of that task, we can check the status of that particular resource. Right. Now, in this session, we are going to learn uh, how we can create a data source uh, using the remote console. Okay. And there's a bit difference. And if we talk about the configuration of data source uh, in comparison with the traditional uh, admin console that we had till the 14.1.1. Okay. And uh, so once we will create the data source, then you have to create a dashboard if you would like to monitor the different parameters. So in a traditional uh, admin console, when we create the data source, we click on the data source and then we get the different tabs there for monitoring. Okay, however, in the remote console, it's a bit different. So when you create a data source, after that, you have to create a data, uh, dashboard, okay? And in that dashboard, uh, you can apply different kind of filters uh, based on the parameters values. Okay, so let us take a look on that, how to create a data source and then how to create a, uh, your uh, dashboard, okay? So this is my uh, domain, which I have added in the remote console tool. Okay. And if you are not uh, aware about uh, this, how to add uh, your admin console URL here. Okay. So let me show you again. So let me open this remote console tool. Okay. After that, if you have already added some uh, domain there, okay, you will get this option. Otherwise you can let me delete this one. Okay. So this is the first option that you will uh, get once you will open the remote console tool where you have to register your uh, admin console of one of the domain. Okay, so I am going to select choose and with the first option. Okay, otherwise what you can do, you can cancel it from here and then you can uh, create a new project also. Okay, so, so for example, if you have a different domain for the different environments, for example, you have multiple domains uh, inside the production environment, you have multiple domains for development, testing. So for each and every environment, you can create a separate project. Okay, and then you can add the corresponding URLs inside that particular project. Okay, for example, if I am creating a, a project with the name of development. Okay, so now you can see that our development inside the providers, there is a development project is added. And now inside that, I am going to add a URL or you can say uh, admin console of one of my domain, development domain. So I'm going with the first option. Okay, so here we have to give a name. So let me give a name dev domain one. Okay, and let me give the username and password that I have given during the creation of my domain. So this domain I have created in the secure mode. So I have to give the HTTPS and the HTTPS port, which is 7002 in my case. So this is a, a secure domain, okay, which comes with a default uh, demo identity certificates. So I have to select the make insecure connection, then click on okay. Okay, so now here you can see that inside this development project, this dev domain is added. Right. So now to uh, create a data source. Okay. So we have to go to edit tree. So whenever we are going to add any of the resource in the web logic, okay, using the remote console. So we have to go to edit tree. So click on edit tree. And here you have to go inside the services. So this is the same option as we have in the traditional uh, admin console. Do we have a services tab inside the services? You have the different options. So I have to click on the data sources. Right. So here you can see that there is no data source as of now. And here you can see, uh, tab to create a new data source right with the name of new with a plus icon right so to create a new data source click on the new option okay so first you have to give a name for the data source so let me give it a demo data source right and here we have to give a jndi so let me give a random uh, jndi jdbc slash demo db Okay, so this is very important parameter because your application connect with the data source with the help of this JNDI. So whenever you are configuring this in any of the of the of the environment, okay, for for any of the customers, so you have to make sure that this JNDI name is same as the developer has defined in the code. This should match right with the code. Okay, so so now you have to set the target 
for the data source so i am going to select the admin server so select the admin server and here you can see the different arrows are here right so if you click on this one then all the all will be selected okay let me deselect all and let me target it to only to the admin server right so i have selected the target as admin server now here you have to select what what kind of a data source you are going to create right generic data source multi data source grid link data source and ucp data source so let me select that generic data source so as soon as you will select the generic data source you will see that the, the, there are a lot of different options are enabled there right so now uh, i am going to create the oracle database which is by default selected Okay, and apart from that, if you are configuring the data source for some other data databases, then this is the list of data supported databases, which you can see here. Right. So I am going with the uh, default database driver, which is the thin XA for application continuity. Okay, and I have to give the name for my database. So let me give the name of my database. ORCL PDB. Okay, this is my uh, database name okay so now let me give the host name which is running on my local host so let me give local host port is 1521 this is the default port okay and let me give the username and password right so what are the parameters that are required we have to give a name for the data source we have to give a gndi name this should match with the name which you have defined in the code then you have to select the target what kind of a data source that you are going to create then database type database driver database name this should match with your database okay for example if you have a, 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 a pdb in the oracle database then you have to specify the pdb name here okay then uh, the host name where your database is running port username and password then click on create okay so now you can see that a data source has been created and then here you can see the different tabs like connection pool so here you can see the different values for the connection pool okay so this is the url that has been created for you based on the input that we have provided this is a driver class that has been selected based on the driver file that we have selected okay so this could different for you if you are going to select the different driver for your data source this is the password field this is the statement cache type statement cache size initial capacity maximum capacity and minimum capacity so these are the three very important parameters that we have to take care right during the configurations apart from that you have some different tabs like for the oracle uh, transactions if you would like to enable the xa transactions and then you have to provide the xa connection timeout value then you all you can specify here right so similarly you have a different tabs here for the data source okay so uh, now we have um, created the data source but we have not activated the changes now to activate the changes what is the difference here you have to go to the cart option and inside this cart option you have to click on the commit changes now you can see that confirmation that data source has been created right so now our data source has been created now to deal with the data source like if you would like to create a dashboard for monitoring the different parameters for a data source if you would like to start stop your data source so for that you have to go to the monitoring tree so either you can click on here on the left corner monitoring tree option right otherwise you can go to the home okay and from home you can go to the monitoring tree option okay there are multiple ways for multiple ways for that so now now we are inside the uh, monitoring tree so again you have to go to the services then data sources okay and let me click on my data source okay so here you can see this is the data source we have created click on this one okay now here you can see this is the data source this is targeted to my admin server this is the name of my data source okay and this is a type of data source and here you can see the different parameters of your data source right so now if you would like to start stop or suspend or shut down your data bo data uh, data source then you can click on your uh, data source name and then you can click on the different operations start resume suspend shut down shrink reset clear cache right and apart from that you are seeing the default uh, parameters or you can see the monitoring parameters here which is corresponding to your data source if you have multiple data source then all the data source will be listed here and you can monitor the values from here but apart from that if you would like to create your own customized dashboard okay for example you don't want to have all these uh, fields 
okay you want some specific fields or on and maybe you would like to apply certain kind of filters here for example if the leak connection count is greater than zero uh, then it should display in the dashboard okay so you, for that you have to click on the new dashboard so as of now we are inside the data source tab right so this is the data source tab and this is my data source and from here you can click on the new dashboard otherwise the other option is you can see here there is a dashboard option here as well right on the left hand side you have option for dashboard so you can click on the dashboard here okay and you can create from here as well okay but let me go to the data source so here i will click on the new dashboard so here i have to give the name for the dashboard so let me give the name custom dashboard okay i am not going to give any descriptions and here you can select the server okay if you would like to go with all then you select any similarly now you can see there are different kind of a parameters are here right you can apply any kind of a filter that you would like to apply here for each and every parameters for the data source right for example this is the leak connection count parameter okay so you can specify leak connection count greater than zero okay so now this is the filter that i have given okay and i will create a dashboard so here you can see there is no data source displaying here as of now because the leak connection count is zero and what is the parameter that we have given for this for this particular dashboard the leak connection count is greater than zero right that's why it is not displaying any value here right so here you, again you, if you would like to change that you can click on the filters so right now we are inside the view you, again you go to the filters and if i scroll down the filters here we have given the greater than zero if i give it any that means i am not give, applying any of the filters so click on save go to view now you can see that the default data source is displaying and all the parameters are displaying here right because now we have given the leak connection count is equal to zero that means any whatever the value is now similarly if you would like to apply any kind of a filter to create uh, this customized dashboard you can click on the filters and go inside the filters and you can apply any of the filter for example active connection current count if any time your active connection count is greater than for example 100 okay then only the data should be displayed on the dashboard so you can click uh, give the value 100 save it and again you can go to view so here you will see the status of the connection pool or your data source only when the the active connection count value will go over the 100 okay so this is the way how you can apply the different filters right so this is the way how you can create a data source in, with the help of remote console okay and then how you can uh, create the custom dashboard and how you can apply the different filters to your dashboard thank you